Welcome back friends. Today we are going to touch that UART peripheral of our nuclear board. If you want to do this experiment, you will need a FTDA USB to serial cable which will communicate data from our controller to our laptop and vice versa. It's quite a popular converter and it is available in online websites like Amazon. So put your glasses on and let's dive. I have launched stm 32 cube IDE. First, I am creating a new stm 32 project. I am using Nuclear G474 board so we can click on the board selector. I am typing G474. Mm, I am selecting my board here. Now we can click next. I am giving a project name 11 underscore UART. Now we can click finish. Click uh, yes here. Okay, we are going to use UART peripheral of our MCU. For that, in the sidebar under connectivity, you can see these options. Several UART peripherals available for this MCU. I am selecting USRT1 peripheral. So there are some settings we should enable here mode we are going for simple asynchronous communication down below in the parameter settings keep the default values for each parameter one thing to note here is the board rate we need to remember this value next we can go to clock configuration i have kept uh, the maximum clock frequency that's it about the configuration part under project manager window keep the default settings now we can generate the code by clicking on the save button we have our code being generated here Let's scroll down in the main.c file. Our point of focus is the while loop in the main function. And our objective is to send some characters over the UART line. We don't need to worry much about it. HI library had provided everything we need. For sending character, we can use HLUART transmit function. The first argument is the UART handle. Since we are using UART1 peripheral, by default it is HURT1. Second argument is the character string to be sent. I am storing the string in a string variable called text and we can assign that with some content. We also need to put the length of the string we are going to transmit. For storing that, I am defining another 16-bit variable data length. So we can calculate the length of the string using strlen function. Since it is a library function, so we can include the string library on top. Okay, that's it about the declaration part. Let's go to the while loop again. So the second argument here is the content to be sent. Since the argument will receive only unsigned 8-bit integer value, we have to typecast our variable into uindate. And third argument is length of data. We have just defined that on top of our program. We can use that here. The last argument is the timeout value means till what time this function has to wait to send all these characters. I am giving 50 millisecond here. Next, I am putting a delay of 1 second. That's it. Now we can compile our program. Yeah, no errors and warnings. Perfect. Now we can go for testing this. But we need a console for viewing the characters sent from the MCU, right? Normally, we call them terminals. There are several terminals available both free and proprietary. Terraterm, Realterm, Doclate, etc. are some examples. Here we can use Terraterm which is a freeware. We can download Terraterm from OSDN website. I can give the link in the description. Okay, it is getting downloaded. Now we can install that. Mm, accepting agreement. We can click next. Go for standard installation. Next, mm, next, again next. Unchecking these options and checking these. We may need to use these features in future. Next, no install. Yeah, we can launch Terraterm now. It is asking some configuration. We are using UART feature, so it is a serial communication protocol. So select serial. We will come back for defining port after some time. We have to make some connections on the nuclear board. So as per the diagram on the screen, make the connections between the FTDA cable and the nuclear board. And once connections are done, we can connect our nuclear board and FTDA USB cable to our laptop. Now go to STN Radio Cube window. Now we can debug our program. Keep the default settings. Click OK. We can run the program by clicking on the play button now. Now program is running. But we cannot see anything on the Terraterm window without correctly configuring the COM port. For that, go to device manager and check for ports, com and LPT. 
The first port is the one where nuclear board is connected because it is described as ST-Link which is the emulator tool used inside nuclear board. Second one is the COM board where our FTTI converter is connected. So in my laptop it is COM4, it may be different port in your machine. So go to Taratum window. Ports are not updated here, there is only COM3 because we launched this window before we connect the FTTA converter. So we can close this window and go to setup menu and select serial port and under port we can select COM4. Speed means the baud rate value, we have it configured in CubeMX. In our case it is 0152.00. So let's select that. We can keep the default values for the rest of the settings. Click new open button now. Yes, our text is getting printed on the screen, but it is printing in single line. We have to break it to line by line, right? Let's do some changes in our program. Add slash or slash n or we will call them carriage return and new line character. And these are some escape sequences used in C programming language. Okay, that's it. Let's test the program again. We can clear the Teratum screen before we start. Now we can run our program. Yes, Teratum is printing line by line. So we have finished coding. Now we can add our code into git repo. So this is our local repo and 11 underscore reward is our newly created project and it is not being uploaded to github. It has these files inside and soon we are going to commit them. So take the source tree application. I have already explained about setting up git and source tree in previous episodes. If you want to watch those please find the link on top. So you can see uncommitted changes here, means all these files are not being added to git repo. Source tree follows same procedure as git. For committing files to git first, we have to type a command git add.write. Instead in source tree, you can just click stage all. So all the files are moved into stage and they are ready for commit. Now click on the commit button. Similar to git command line, we have to add a version description. And please note that don't check this button. This button will push this version directly into remote along creating the local commit. It will create conflicts when you have done some modification on remote. So better avoid checking this box. So now we can click the commit button. Yes, we have created a local version now. Let's check our GitHub repo. Master our controller is our remote repo name. Yeah, so this is the last commit message. To see all the commits in detail, click here. So, so far we have only made three commits. Okay, go back to source tree. Now we can push the local changes to remote. It's a good practice that before we do every push, we must pull the remote changes first. So click on the pull button. Yeah, okay, click on the pull button. Now we can click the push button. We are pushing to master branch. Okay, now we can click on the push button. It is asking for authentication. So username is vdevelop and password is the personal access token we have created in the previous episodes. If you check this box then you don't need to enter password for every push. That's it. We have pushed the changes. Let's verify that checking at the github repo. Okay we can click uh, refresh button. You can see the latest commit appeared here. So we have done for today. Today we have discussed about the polling feature of UART peripheral. There are some other methods available for UART. Let's understand those in upcoming episodes. So thank you for watching.